Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 13 of the chapter Thermodynamics. You know, by now we have studied the first law of thermodynamics. We have understood what state functions are. We understood what the meaning of internal energy and we also understood what enthalpy means. We know the first law of thermodynamics which tells us it is the sum of the heat exchange and the work done. So we know how pressure volume work is done in the case of thermodynamic systems. Also in the previous videos now we have studied about the heat capacity. So after the knowledge of all of these it is now I think we are equipped to understand how do we experimentally find out this transfer of energy. We know from the heat capacity, we know that when we want to find out the energy exchange, we would have to calculate the work or we would have to see what is the change in temperature that took place. And also from our knowledge of heat capacity, we understood that the temperature would rise only, would rise more for a substance that has a low heat capacity. And one that has a high heat capacity will show a small difference in temperature. So how do we measure this temperature and from this difference in temperature how do we make out how much heat was actually transferred in the process whether it was given to the system or was it given out by the system. This procedure or this method of experimentally finding out the amount of heat that is exchanged is known as calorie metry. If you divide this word into two parts Calorie is the unit for energy or heat and metry means measuring it. So the measurement of heat which is given out or absorbed in thermodynamic systems or processes is known as calorie metry. Also we have studied that the heat content, that is the heat which is given out or absorbed, it may be done under two conditions. And what are these two conditions? Either it is done at constant volume or we usually have systems where you have a constant pressure. And in the previous videos I explained to you that when you have constant heat exchange at constant volume is equal to the internal energy change because at this point the work done is zero and the heat exchange that takes place at constant pressure would be equal to the enthalpy change, the derivation of which I've talked in the part 10. So I would encourage you to watch the previous videos in order to understand all of these terms. So let us now come to what calorie, how do we do it under these two conditions. The first is that we can calculate delta U, that is the change in internal energy, by calculating the change in heat when the volume is constant. For this, what is the experimental setup? The instrument that we use for calorie metry is known as a calorie meter, right? We call these the calorie meters and the calorie meter is nothing but a vessel in which the reaction is going to take place and which you can use to uh, calculate, which you can use to calculate the transfer of heat or you can uh, find out the temperature difference in it and see how much heat was transferred because you know the heat capacity of that container you know the heat capacity of that container. So let us just come to this. I'll explain the entire uh, apparatus to you. The delta U measurements are done at constant volume and the heat exchange is QV. The apparatus is known as the bomb calorie meter. The bomb calorie meter consists of a metallic container, like a steel container, right? This is a steel container and the steel container has a nice thick sheet of steel and you know the uh, heat capacity of the steel and it is this steel container which is actually called the bomb the entire apparatus is known as the calorie meter but this is known as the bomb we have no reason why it is called the bomb but it is known as the bomb and this is the bomb calorie meter so what does it have it has a small container which is made up of steel and what is present in this uh, container? What else do you see? There is an opening, a tap. And this opening is like a nozzle which connects, you can connect a pipe to it and that pipe is connecting it to an oxygen cylinder. So you have, this is an oxygen inlet. It allows oxygen to come into the bomb. I'll call this container the bomb now. 
okay so it allows oxygen to come into the bomb and you have these two openings which allow there's this wire a lead an electrical lead which comes down here and which produces a spark so what will happen it's an electrically charged thing and if you join the two corners and there's a battery here which will allow the a little current to flow so when you touch the two or join the circuit a spark is produced here and when this so they are known as the firing leads they cause fire inside the bomb so they are causing a it's like a lighter you know you may call it a lighter which will start a spark and that spark is going to ignite a sample which is uh, a combustible substance that we have kept inside the bomb now what does the bomb have then it has a combustible substance and it has oxygen so we know anything that burns needs oxygen to burn so whatever the substance is we just need oxygen and the substance so that there is no other heat exchange uh, with any other component we only want the two reactants the substance that has to burn and oxygen which is going to burn it so that is what we had in the bomb and remember that this oxygen outlet uh, sorry inlet will only allow oxygen to come in and it does not let anything go out it is a one way process right there will be a valve or something which will not let anything to go out why do we want this because we want to carry out this reaction at constant volume so our reaction is going to take place in this sealed box which is known as the bomb and this ignition spark also it is only wire which is coming into it and it does not allow matter to go out do you see this line is continuous and it's just two wires which are coming in from it and it's perfectly sealed there is no escape of anything from the bomb then we immerse this entire jar the bomb into water so and we have immersed it into another larger container which has water in it and what does the water why do we have it filled with water and we have it filled with water in such a way that the bomb is completely immersed in water if the there is any exchange of heat we do not we cannot calculate the temperature change inside the bomb because it's a sealed vessel but if it loses heat the water will become hotter if it absorbs heat the water will become colder and why do we immerse it completely into the bomb completely into water because even if it loses heat from the top we want the water to absorb that heat and even if it is absorbing heat from the top we want water to give that heat so that when we calculate the temperature difference of water we know exactly how much heat has been given to the bomb or how much heat has been absorbed or given out by the bomb right in during the reaction and then we have this you know inside the water we have a stirrer it's a churner so it's going to stir and the churner keeps moving like a mixy you know it's like a fan which is rotating why is it rotating because we want all the water to keep moving in order to have and it's not too fast because you know if too much of mechanical work is done the temperature of the water would simply rise because of this mechanical work we don't want that we just want a little movement in the water so that the distribution of heat is equal and this is a thermometer which is going to take the reading of the temperature change so what happens when you burn this substance inside it what will happen it will release heat when it releases gives out heat we allow we we see that the water will become warmer and we can calculate the increase in temperature of the water we know the heat capacity of the bomb and we know the heat capacity or the specific heat of water and the water that has been filled in this vessel is of known volume you know exactly how many grams it is so the temperature increase and we know its specific heat how much of heat has been transferred to water and how much of it has been lost to the uh, heat capacity of the bomb because the bomb is in between it's a wall it is going to absorb some amount of heat so that amount of heat would be equal to the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter too of the bomb also so keeping into consideration all these and then adding up the specific heat this much heat must have been absorbed or evolved by water which is its specific heat this much of heat is being used up uh, by the bomb either the heat is in this case heat is coming out of the vessel it's an exothermic process 
so the bomb is absorbing some of that heat and then the water is absorbing some of the heat as its specific heat and uh, the heat capacity and the rest is being used up to increase the temperature so then we use the formula we know that delta u is equal to q minus p delta v according to the first law of thermodynamics but since this reaction is taking place at constant volume delta v is equal to zero therefore the change in internal energy is equal to the heat exchange which takes place under these conditions which we write as qv because it shows the heat change that took place at constant volume which is equal to cv delta t where c is the heat capacity delta t is the change in temperature so using this formula we and knowing all the values we can calculate how much heat was given out or absorbed by this measured mass of sample which reacted with oxygen to burn and produce heat so this is how we calculate uh, the delta u at constant volume using a bomb calorimeter but we also know another condition under which the reactions take place they may not take place at constant volume they may take place at constant pressure in that case what we calculate is delta h it is the change in enthalpy again i encourage you to watch the previous videos to understand this better now volume is not our restriction we don't need a box that is sealed on all sides and we do not want uh, anything to get out we just need a cup like a styrofoam cup do you see this a simple styrofoam cup you can use and the, the reaction is taking place the reaction mixture may be half filled half of the cup with whatever solutions and dip a thermometer into it and whatever change takes place in the styrofoam cup the thermometer is going to note the difference in the temperature and since we are not bothered about the uh, the heat being uh, the sorry the uh, volume being increased or decreased and the pressure is atmospheric pressure which is pushing it down the immediate change of the temperature that takes place inside the reaction mixture would be recorded by the thermometer which is present inside the reaction mixture so before the heat is lost to the surroundings or anything the thermometer is recording the change in temperature that occurs so we get this and from this also this here what is the calorie meter in this case the calorie meter is nothing but a, but a simple styrofoam cup right here for constant volume we needed the bomb calorie meter but for a uh, for measurement at constant pressure all you need is any anything will do why we use styrofoam is because it does not conduct heat much and therefore it will uh, the loss of energy heat would not be as much but uh, in any case we have the thermometer inside the reaction mixture so uh, we are not losing the heat before it loses heat to the surroundings we can record it in this case we know that delta h would be equal to qp and the uh, if you relate it to the heat capacity it is cp delta t using this formula you can calculate the difference in temperature and knowing the heat capacity of the uh, styrofoam cup you would know the um, the heat exchange that actually took place now usually the enthalpy that we calculate if we have a chemical equation of the change that is taking place the enthalpy change that takes place in that entire chemical reaction assuming that equation to be a molar equation we call it the enthalpy of reaction the enthalpy change that took place according to the balanced chemical equation we do all this in details when we study enthalpy in more details now for an exothermic reaction if the reaction is exothermic obviously qp would be negative and if the reaction is endothermic qp would be positive why because in thermodynamics we have always maintained that when energy is gained by the system the value should be positive it is adding to the energy whether it is heat work whatever but if it is losing energy the convention that we use is negative so for exothermic reactions delta uh, the, the qp is negative and delta r is also negative similarly for endothermic reaction qp and delta h both are positive it's the same here for an endothermic reaction heat is being absorbed therefore delta u and qv are positive and for exothermic heat is heat is being lost therefore both delta u and qv are negative 
So this was about calorimetry, the theoretical part of uh, calorimetry and understanding what it is. In the next video, we are going to solve a few numerical problems based on calorimetry and the heat capacity too. A little bit about enthalpy, whatever we've studied till now. And then we'll proceed with different types of enthalpies that will be the next topic. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.